Welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the third video in IB Chemistry Topic 20, Organic Chemistry, where we will be looking at electrophilic addition, Markovnikov's rule, carbocation stability and reduction of alcohols. Before watching this video, ensure you have watched our entire Topic 10 video series in its entirety, as it covers vital concepts required to understand everything within. In the third video of that series, we introduced addition reactions of alkenes with concentrated hydrogen halides and diatomic halogens. We mentioned these both take place via the mechanism known as electrophilic addition, and that at higher level you are expected to recall it. Before we do so, it is necessary to first define an electrophile. It is a positively charged species which is attracted to a region of high electron density where it accepts a pair of electrons to form a dative covalent bond. Let's look at how this applies to the mechanism using the reaction of ethene and hydrogen bromide to form bromoethane. The first stage of drawing an electrophilic addition mechanism involves drawing the displayed formula for the alkene and hydrogen halide, orientating the alkene so that the bond angles are at 90 degrees and the hydrogen halide so that it is vertically aligned below and lateral to the double bond, with the hydrogen on top. To this we add Delta positive and negative labels to the hydrogen and halogen respectively, indicating the polarity created due to the difference in electronegativity of the hydrogen and halogen atoms. This hydrogen acts as an electrophile and is attracted to the region of high electron density within the double bond, accepting its electrons to form a dative bond. We indicate this by drawing a double-headed curly arrow from the double bond to the hydrogen atom to represent movement of electrons. Unlike the half-headed curly arrow introduced within topic 10 in free radical substitution, which represented the movement of one electron via homolytic fission, double-headed curly arrows represent the movement of two electrons via heterolytic fission. Since hydrogen can only form one bond, this triggers the breaking of the hydrogen-halogen bond, so that both electrons pass to the halogen, again indicated using a double-headed curly arrow from the hydrogen-halogen bond to the halogen. The second stage of drawing the mechanism involves redrawing the displayed formula, showing the now broken carbon-carbon double bond with a positive charge on one carbon and additional H bound to the other carbon, and the free halide ion with a lone pair and negative charge. Note the carbon bearing the positive charge is named a carbocation. The lone pair of electrons on the halide is attracted strongly to this positive carbocation, donating its electrons to form a dative bond which we indicate once again using a double-headed curly arrow from the lone electrons to the carbocation. The third and final stage of the mechanism is to draw the completed product, here bromoethane. However, when reacting with a diatomic halogen, since the electronegativity of both atoms is identical, there is no delta positive hydrogen to act as an electrophile. So how does the reaction take place? Well, let's consider ethene reacting with diatomic bromine. As the halogen approaches the double bond, the higher electron density pushes the electron density of the interhalogen bond towards the furthest halogen, inducing a dipole. We can signify this using a dotted arrow alongside the interhalogen bond. This allows the closest halogen to act as a delta positive hydrogen, and the further like the halogen. Aside from this initial stage, the reaction mechanism remains identical, i.e. we would show the attraction of the electrophile then the formation of the carbocation and halide ion, and finally the formation of the end product. At this stage, we would like to reiterate how important it is to use curly, double-headed arrows. You will lose marks in the exam if they are straight. But when drawing these arrows, how do we know which carbon the electrophile bonds to, and which becomes the carbocation? Well, looking at our example of ethene and hydrogen bromide, as the carbon chain length is 2, it does not matter as ethene is symmetrical. However, if we increased it to 4 by changing ethene to butene, you can see that the hydrogen could bond to either the first or second carbon, giving rise to two isomers respectively, one bromobutane and two bromobutane. However, one of these forms far more frequently than the other, predicted using Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule simply states that the electrophile will preferably bond to the carbon atom from the double bond with the largest number of hydrogens already bound. Since the electrophile is mostly hydrogen, it is often summarised to, those who have more shall get more. 
let's reconsider our example of butuanine. The first stage of the mechanism remains unchanged. However, when drawing the second stage, we use Markovnikov's rule. As the first carbon has two hydrogens bound, but the second only has one, the hydrogen atom will preferably bond to the first carbon. This therefore leads to the production of two bromobutane as the main product. However, small quantities of one bromobutane will be produced. It is vital that you understand that whilst Markovnikov's rule predicts the main product, it does not explain the phenomenon. If asked to explain this, you must refer to a principle called carbocation stability. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.